الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam The most important piece of advice that we can commence with this afternoon is that we should all be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the degree that it keeps us away from displeasing Him. And we should be hopeful in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the degree that we continue doing good deeds hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy accepts those deeds and grants us Jannatul Firdaus. My brothers and sisters, a very simple question that I wish to speak about today is why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us? What has he required of us? What will he give us in return in this world and the next? It's very important for us to know this. The reason is we all witness people being born. They grow a little bit older. They become aged and thereafter they pass on. They pass away. So people are on earth for a short span. Why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us in a way that our lifespan is between 60 and 70 years? Why? Why do we see that when a person is born, they don't really understand anything? They cannot speak. None of us seated here can actually remember the day we were born. None of us knew how to speak when we were born. There was an exception indeed of Jesus or Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, may peace be on him, where he spoke from the cradle. That was a miracle. But the case of the rest of us, Allah says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah took you out of the wombs of your mothers in a condition that you knew nothing. And what did Allah do for you? He gave you the faculties of hearing, of sight, and He gave you your organs. He fashioned you in a beautiful way so that as you grow older, you would register whatever was happening and you would start asking questions and you would learn and you would go back and understand who your Creator is and why He made you. Because anyone who thinks that we were created without purpose has actually lost. We were created with a purpose. So what was that purpose? And how do I understand that there was a purpose? There is a purpose because time is limited and people are going. Where are they going? Some have answers if they believe. And those who don't do not even have answers. They don't even know where people actually go. It's guesswork for them. But he who made us would never leave us without telling us why he made us. So therefore, it is important for every one of us to keep asking questions. Never be ashamed of the questions that you have. There will be answers and you will be guided because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers as a gift for us. The fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us, that's probably one of the biggest gifts that we have. If not the biggest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. And in the Quran, He speaks about why He made us. So Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ 
الْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except that they worship me. They do as will please me. They fulfill what I have asked them to fulfill. And they will abstain from what I have asked them to abstain from throughout their lives. Subhanallah. Now, when we were young and we read that verse, I'm speaking about myself. The understanding we had of it was not as we have today. Because now that you grow older, you realize indeed happiness and contentment comes to those who obey the command of their maker. Look at those who have run after the dunya or the worldly life without any limits. If they have not limited themselves to what pleases Allah alone, then do you know what happens to them? They don't have contentment no matter what they have amassed in terms of material living. They cannot sleep sometimes. They don't have good health. They are not happy sometimes because they are lacking the understanding of why they are here. Subhanallah. Primarily, we are here to worship Allah and Allah alone. This is why the first instruction issued in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses it to all the people. Look at Surah Al-Baqarah. The first time Allah says, Ya, what does He say? Ya ayyuha an-nas u'abudu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum wal-lazhina min qablikum. O people, this is addressed to the people at large. O people, O mankind, worship your Lord. U'abudu rabbakum. Rabb is the one who made you. So Allah adds to that al-lazhi khalaqakum. It is only correct that you worship he who made you alone. When I put my head on the ground, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I cannot put my head on the ground not for anyone besides he who made me. That's all. Who made me? He is the one I can put my head on the ground for. Whom I'm going to return to? He is the only supreme deity and being that I can worship. So no act of worship is meant to be rendered to anyone or anything besides He who made us. We would be failing if we were to worship anyone besides our maker. And this is why we say that if I were to say, oh, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, praise be to the one or glory be to the one, who is my Rabb? Who is the highest? Whom am I referring to? Take a look at the term Rabbun. It is made up of three letters of the Arabic language. The Ra, and then there is a Ba, and another Ba. So Rabbun. In the English language, a whole paragraph would be needed in order to explain what exactly that means. Subhanallah. He is the one who made you, who nurtures, who is in control of all aspects of your existence. Nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer. That's who Rabbun is. Subhanallah. So whoever is in control of my life, I worship him alone. We cannot insult him by worshipping anything that he has created, anything he has made. And this is why the Quran is filled with verses reminding us, worship your maker. Fulfill his instruction. Fulfill his decree. What will he give you in return? If you fulfill what he wants, he will give you goodness in the world and goodness in the next. You know, some young, some young people sometimes, they feel that I'm struggling in the, on earth maybe because I'm not praying, maybe because I'm not uh, worshipping Allah correctly, maybe because uh, I'm not doing the right thing. Correct. That may be to a certain extent correct. That a person does not have the millions and the billions because maybe Allah is displeased with him. But... It does not mean that if Allah is pleased with you, He will give you material wealth. Allah can be pleased with you. And as a result of that pleasure, He can take away your material wealth. This is why a gift of a true believer is when he struggles. He faces challenges. And those challenges bring him closer to Allah. If you suffer a medical illness or you suffered financial loss or in your social life, you have had a problem, an issue. And if that brought you closer to Allah, wasn't it a gift of Allah? How many of us, we're not so regular with our prayers. We come on a Friday, mashallah. After that, we wait for the next Friday. It happens, right? So when we are sick or we suffered a loss or something goes wrong, we are found in the masjid for Salatul Fajr. What brought you here? It was your Rabb. By putting a difficulty in your life, you started softening towards him. 
Why does he do that? And why does he prolong the difficulty? A person diagnosed with sickness, may Allah grant us all cure. Everyone who's struggling with any illness, may Allah grant us cure. Ameen. So, if, if it is prolonged, I'm calling out to Allah for one month, two months, one year, two years. My problem is still not resolved. Allah keeps me there because Allah wants me to have conviction that He alone will sort this matter out. So I might have tried with this man, that man, visited this doctor, that doctor. Everything is okay that you, if it's within the limits, you, you, you are allowed to seek medication. In fact, you should. But cure is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah keeps you in a condition for you to realize that He alone is in charge. He alone is in control. And you have now become close to Him as a result of something you perceived to be a difficulty. This is why Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. When Allah loves His slave, when Allah loves a slave, that's when Allah tests him. And Allah tests him more, the greater the reward, the bigger the test. The bigger the test, the greater the reward. ajri ma And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusul. The best of creation, the most noble of all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what? He went through so many challenges. When he was born, he was already an orphan. That shows us that if you're an orphan, it does not mean that Allah is not pleased with you. It does not mean that you are disadvantaged. The one whom Allah loved the most was actually an orphan. After that, he lost his mother. Then he was looked after by his grandfather. He lost the grandfather, then his uncle. Then as he grew older, he was known as the truthful one. He was known as a sadiq al-ameen. From a certain point onwards, he was a person whom everyone trusted. But when Allah placed on his shoulders a burden of giving the message, they called him a liar. They called him names. His own family turned against him. The people actually drove him out of Makkah al mukarramah with his companions. Was he wrong? He was not wrong. But why did they they persecute him just because he had a good message and he kept on he maintained that goodness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding so we need to continue being good we need to continue being kind we need to continue delivering the message Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whom we all follow never ever gave up the message because people persecuted because people said bad things he excused them look at what happened in Ta'if he excused them he prayed for them he gave them a good message he continued praying until subhanallah they saw the light at some stage even if it meant the next generation may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah grant us patience. May Allah grant us ease. Never lose hope. Don't give up your faith because people say bad words to you. In fact, it's a time to shine and to show that indeed this faith is a faith of peace and goodness and calm. And it is indeed our responsibility to reach out to the rest of the creatures of the same maker who made me and you. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, Allah made us to worship Him. Allah made us to please Him. And Allah says, if you please Him, He will grant you goodness in this world and goodness in the next. So in the next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Jannah. Jannah that we all want, we all pray for, we all would love. May Allah grant us Jannah to Firdaus. In order to get into Jannah to Firdaus, you need to make sure that you've understood the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for me to get to paradise, if I'm looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to go back and read the words of Allah. Allah says to us, Whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah, whoever is looking forward to that beautiful, wonderful day, and they should prepare for it by the following. What is it? Allah says, they should do good deeds, acceptable deeds. What is a good deed? A good deed, that which is salih, is that which is in conformity to what the messenger brought to us from Allah. That's it. You want to know an act of worship? 
You need to know it from Allah. How did Allah teach it to us? Through a messenger. My brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of a messenger? If someone walked into here and said, I am the messenger of so and so, I have come to you with what? A messenger will have a message. A messenger will carry the message. So that message is what is absolutely important. When Allah made me, he told me, I made you to worship me. So I'm going to send someone to you to show you how I want to be worshipped. When you want a driving license, you need to read the code. You need to make sure you know the theory and you go for the test because it's not according to your whims and fancies. There are rules and regulations without knowing what those who own the roads would like from you. You would probably be fined every single day. There are new rules and regulations now. Please be careful with your mobile devices. Be careful with whatever else. Make sure you have your seatbelt on because now things are changing in this country. Subhanallah. Allah becoming strict because of accidents that have been happening because of so many other reasons so you need to follow the rule in order to be able to be protected from being fined number one and to be able to get to your destination if you don't follow the rules you may never get to your destination the same applies in Islam life is much more important than a mere driver's license if you can understand that for a driver's license and for driving from point A to point B, Wallahi, right now we're in point A. We are getting to point B, which is Jannatul Firdaus. While you're getting there, there are rules, regulations, so that you are not fined by the one who made you and I and the path and the one who, who decided the destination. And at the same time, we need to make sure that we drive carefully. We make sure nothing is done wrong. And we will get to our destination if we follow the rules. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, you want to meet with Allah? You want to get to your destination? You, I will send you a messenger. The purpose of sending the messenger is to teach you how to worship me. So you don't just choose and decide how to worship Allah. You need to look at what the messenger says. When I get up for Salatul Jum'ah, there is a specific time. I cannot pitch up at 10 o'clock in the morning and announce, guys, today we're making Jum'ah uh, at this time because it's going to be inconvenient to come later and today we're going to make four units of prayer or four rakaat because next week we're not going to be able to read will any one of you agree with that no because it does not conform to what the prophet taught us that's it if we decide okay today in Jum'ah, because we have friends elsewhere who belong to different faiths we're going to say Allahu Akbar and we're going to start reading from the Bible does it help it's wrong because not because we disrespect others they all have the freedom of choice and religion. Indeed, we believe in that, but, but we follow what Allah and His Rasul said because we consider ourselves Muslimin. What is the meaning of a Muslim? A submitter. One who submitted. So if we want to worship Allah, we need to go back to the encyclopedia, go back to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and take a look at what the Messenger gave us. That's why He was sent. And this is the reason why we are honored that we had someone to come and tell us what Allah wants from us. My brothers and sisters, everything, your dealings, your salah, your zakah, your hajj, your fasting, every single aspect of my life and your lives is governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot choose an act of worship decided on your own. For example, if there is a person who says, okay, I'm going to read the Quran, but I'm going to read word by word the other way around, you know, the other way around. You cannot do that. You have to read it this way. You have to read it properly. You have to make sure that you are reading the verses and you need to make sure that your zakah is given according to the rules of zakah. You fast from dawn to dusk. You need to make sure it's done. You cannot just decide, you know what, uh, that's it. I'm not going to fast right now because uh, it doesn't suit me. Or I'm going to fast, but the only thing I'm going to drink is water because, you know, the days are long. You cannot do that. It's actually decided by Allah. So this is the beauty of it. My brothers and sisters, the reason why I mention this, this is the core. This is the main message. We can lose our destination that we've been working for for so many years when we've lost focus regarding what the messenger has brought, regarding the importance of worshipping Allah alone, regarding of following this messenger as strictly as possible. So Allah says in that verse at the end of Surah Al-Kahf that I just read before you, Allah says, whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they should 
do good deeds. Good deeds are those that conform with what the messenger has brought. Secondly, they should make sure that they have not associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. There is no deed that Allah will accept if we have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. So as a result of worshiping Allah alone, he did not say that he's going to suddenly throw a million pounds at you. And he's going to suddenly throw, you know, uh, the best of the world at you. You're going to have a Ferrari and you're probably going to have a bungalow and you're going to be having a thick salary and you're going to be on holiday every week. Why? Because I make five salah a day and I even get up for tahajjud. That's not what Allah promised you. Allah says, if you do follow what I say, I will give you contentment. You will be a content person with whatever you have. You are married. You're so happy. Your family, you're so happy with the rest, subhanAllah, because you know this is my portion. It's my nasib, and I'm rarely working with it. I'm thankful to Allah. I worked hard. Whatever I got was in the hands of Allah. I believe. I have conviction in Allah and Allah alone, subhanAllah. What does He do for you? Because you believe. He makes you happy. If you don't believe, I promise you, when people pass away, you become depressed because you don't know where they've gone. When people pass away, when some loss happens for us or for anyone else, we become depressed because we don't believe. A believer knows that if it was a dark night tonight, the sun has to rise in the morning. A believer believes if I'm going through a problem today, that problem cannot last because Allah is in charge. A believer believes that if today is a bad day, not every day will be a bad day because the days are different. A believer believes that not every day will be the same because in the same way that Allah tests you by giving you, He tests you by taking it away as well. So when Allah gives you, He's watching your attitude. He sees what it does to you. It's just a test. When you go, you leave everything. When you came, you came with nothing. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, let's never lose focus regarding this test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the reason why the messenger was sent. Allah says it in the Quran. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We have never sent a messenger except that he should be followed by the will of Allah. For him to be followed. Today there are people who say, right, this is the Quran. I take it. And you know what? As for the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it means nothing to me. There are people who say this. We will say, well, if you follow the Quran correctly, here's a verse. Allah says you follow the messenger. We have sent the messengers in order to be followed. So follow the path. Don't, if you follow the Quran correctly, it will lead you automatically to the sunnah of Muhammad ﷺ. May Allah grant us ease. Then my brothers and sisters, I have a word of encouragement for myself and yourselves. What is it? Every day, try and be better than the previous day. Don't go backwards on your achievement. You know, if you have a salary today of 100 pounds a week, within a month, wouldn't you like an increase? Or do you mind the decrease? Do you mind if they say, okay, next week we're demoting you and you're only going to get 50 pounds from next week? You're going to say, but why? I've been working here for so long, dedicated, I'm trying hard. I need to get some form of increment. We want an increment. If you are a businessman and you have a business, you want to open another branch, you want to expand your business. If your turnover is a thousand pounds a day, you want to make it to two thousand, three. Nobody wants to go backward, but that money, that position, that salary will not help you beyond your life in this world. Subhanallah. So therefore, remember, for the salary of the Akhirah, the deeds are actually the currency. Deeds are the currency. Increase them, just like you want to increase your business. If you have been reading five salah a day, just the farad, take your time about the salah. Incre- better the quality of it. Perhaps you want to read the sunnah and the nafil, yes. It is something that is there. Find out what is sunan al-ratiba. Find out which salawat, where, how much, and so on. You will definitely be able to increase your investment regarding the hereafter. Don't go back on your achievement. Many of us are guilty of not reading the Quran. Many of us are guilty of not attempting to understand the Quran. We read it and we don't attempt. I've heard people whisper into my ears that, Sheikh, you know, it is haram for a layman to read the translation of the Quran. But why? But why? That is shaitan whispering in your ear. 
the most powerful kalam that you have. How can you say it's not allowed? Yes, you will have questions. Ask those who have knowledge. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those who know. Ask those with sound knowledge. If you don't know. So you don't jump to conclusions. I don't say that because I don't know a little bit of, I may not understand a few things, so I must ignore it completely. No! Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. What happened to him? He read a few verses of the Quran. His life changed. Look at al-Najashi, Ashama of Abyssinia, the Negus. He read, he heard a few verses of the Quran being recited. He started crying. His life changed. How many of us, we are Muslims. We were born as Muslim in a lot of cases. And we hear the Quran. And the Quran has not moved us, not even an inch. Something wrong with our hearts. If the Quran has moved people who were enemies of Islam and softened their hearts, such as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, they became known as radiallahu an. It is an insult to say his name without adding on it. May Allah be pleased with him. Radiallahu an. And where, where was the beginning? The beginning was a few verses of the Quran. My brothers and sisters, aren't we guilty? We read the Quran, we don't have a feeling. We read the Quran, there is, we don't want to know the meaning. We are happy with the melodious tone we have in our cars, CDs, playing of the Quran. It is important, yes indeed. But that's not the only right of the Quran. The Quran has many rights. And one of them is for you to understand. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Will they not attempt to understand the Qur'an? Will they not try to understand it? Subhanallah, in another place, in Surah Sa'd, Allah says why He revealed the book. كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ A book that we have revealed. Allah is referring here to the revelation in order that its verses be pondered over. That's the reason why we revealed it. In order that its verses be pondered over. How many of us have pondered over the verses of the Quran? How many of us have looked into the meanings? How many of us have attended lectures and lessons in our own masajid that are free of charge? We don't attend. Something is wrong. Make an effort inshallah. That's my message. Let's let tomorrow be better than today. And let's let today be better than yesterday. Let's become regular. Let's worship Allah alone. And let's follow the path of the messenger. In this way, those around us will realize that definitely this is a beautiful faith filled with peace, serenity, internal, external peace. The reaching out to the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know that the, the da'wah, the, the invitation to Islam, to others, is a primary duty upon us all. And one of the best ways of beginning is through developing yourself, your character, your conduct, your honesty, the way you speak, the way you render assistance to fellow human beings. Someone needs help, rush to their help. You don't need to say, oh, that's not a Muslim, I don't... No, what attitude is this? Reach out to all human beings. There is a narration that makes mention of how a man achieved forgiveness because he helped quench the thirst of a dog. Imagine the people around you are far higher than that. What would you achieve if you were to reach out to human beings? Had you reached out to a dog, you would have achieved forgiveness. If it were done with, the, with sincerity, etc. But if you were to reach out to other human beings... I'm not talking of people who belong to our faith. I'm talking of others. Imagine the reward you would get. My brothers and sisters, it's time we developed ourselves. The way we spoke, the way we interacted with people, it needs to be absolutely perfect. We are ambassadors of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We were placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We owe Allah worship and we owe him worship alone. We owe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a following and we will follow him in every footstep as far as possible. And we need to develop ourselves regarding our relations with the rest of mankind known as huququl ibad. I pray that we all benefit from what has been said. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه جواد كريم.